I just wanted to mention this. This is from Pink News. Of course, one of my favorite media outlets. It says, U.S. President Joe Biden honored the dozens of trans people lost to a horrifying wave of violence on Transgender Day of Remembrance. On Saturday, uh, the world grew silent as countless memorialized and celebrated the lives of victims of anti-trans violence. Among them was Biden, who in a White House news release paid tribute to those we lost in the deadliest year on record for transgender Americans. The... um, the White House later hosted a vigil in recognition of trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people lost to violence, with second gentleman Doug Emhoff leading the ceremony, but seemingly capturing the extent of the climate of fear felt by trans Americans. Biden's address was out of date mere moments after it was published. It says, uh, this is Biden, he said, quote, this year, at least 46 transgender individuals in this country were killed in horrifying acts of violence. And then it goes on to say that actually the death toll now is 48. Okay, so it's the deadliest year on record for trans people, so deadly that the president of the United States needs to hold a a vigil for them. How many trans people have been murdered? 48. The entire year up to now in the whole country. Now, all murders are very sad, but but what what do we expect exactly? Do we expect the, the trans murder rate to be zero? All people, no matter what group you belong to, no matter what your gender identity is, you are susceptible to potentially being murdered, unfortunately, because you're a mortal human being. And so you take any random group of people. We could take plumbers. Let's just take plumbers. Or, you know, how many plumbers have been murdered this year? Probably not zero. Does that automatically mean that there's some sort of anti-plumber hate crime epidemic? No, what we find is that actually... The trans murder rate is very, very low. It is significantly lower. It's like a third of the murder rate of the general population. Okay, so I say that again. If you're a trans person, statistically, you are much less likely to be murdered than if you are a non-trans person. And then if you look at the the individual cases, because you'll notice something. When we're told about the trans uh, hate crime epidemic, supposedly, um... They're always very vague about it. They say 48 trans people have been murdered, and those are all of the murders. And they sort of vaguely say, oh, hate and discrimination. But then if you ask, well, what, you know, can you give me some examples of like, are you saying that there are people out there hunting trans people and murdering them for being trans? Can you give me some examples of that? Is that all 48 of them? That's when they go silent. Because in reality, when you actually look at the individual cases, as I have done, and others have done. Uh, So Rab Amari has an article about it uh, today, I think in the New York Post. Uh, The Federalist has has done some research into this. When you look at the individual cases, you discover that in almost every case, when a trans person is murdered, it's because it's drug-related, it's gang-related, it's prostitution-related, or it's related related to domestic violence. In other words, it's, it's the same reason why most people are murdered. The same kind of risk categories apply to trans people as applies to the general population. Anti-trans hatred or bigotry has nothing to do with almost any of it. And yet they still talk about the trans hate crime epidemic, which is a total fabrication. It's a fantasy. It doesn't exist, for the record. Hey, listen. Hit the subscribe button. Do it right now. I demand it. And I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.